Welcome back to the Top Notch Documentaries YouTube channel. In this video I shall be covering the serial bank robber dubbed the Straw Hat Bandit. I hope you enjoy. The Straw Hat Bandit entered the scene in 2012 and began a long reign of bank holdups. The bandit hid his identity through numerous hats, the straw one being the most notable, which was used by the FBI to nickname him. He sported suits, multiple clothing layers, and usually wore a pillowcase type face mask. The bandit also displayed a handgun in the vast majority of the robberies. The FBI had the straw hat bandit on their radar because of the drastic attempts to avoid apprehension that he'd carefully put into practice. The bandit used methods such as tipping bleach at the robbery scenes to prevent DNA recovery along with making false phone calls to emergency services before taking over the bank. Getting a bit ahead of myself here but this is an interesting point. He also tended to leave his phone at his home because he knew that it could be traced or accidentally dropped at one of the banks. The bandit was evidently well versed at covering his tracks and avoiding identification. With violence and threats of violence being used in many of the robberies, the bandit seemingly had no plans to slow down his bank robberies. The spree lasted years, with the authorities scrambling to try to figure out who the man behind the disguise really was. But little did the authorities know, they were dealing with a veteran when it came to committing bank robberies. The bandit had really been active since May 2007. In his earlier robberies, the bandit did little to cause a scene or really hide his identity. The Straw Hat Bandit nickname hadn't even been handed out to him yet. Despite the lack of a nickname, apparently he had worn a straw hat in some of the earlier robberies. No firearms were exposed during these earlier robberies, and the bank tellers even described the robber as being overly polite, whilst wearing floral shirts in the commission of the crimes. These robberies occurred from May 4th, 2007 until February 12th, 2008. The overall amount stolen being $102,000 in eight separate robberies. Despite the impressive haul, the robber was soon caught. He was pulled over driving his BMW shortly after his final robbery. He was identified as Richard Boyle, couldn't find out how they figured out it was him, but I assume that it was because his face was visible during these robberies. On the surface, Richard Boyle was a successful man. He had been employed as a salesman, selling supplies to orthopaedic surgeons. He was earning roughly $250,000 a year from this work at the time. Despite this insane life-changing salary, he seemed to spiral into mental illness following the death of his psychiatrist in 2001. Without anyone to vent his problems to, Boyle didn't take his medication and fell off the wagon. His financial situation was deteriorating and internal struggles wouldn't go away. In 2004, Boyle decided to take his family on a two-year cross-country trip for some unknown reason. Whether he was literally trying to escape his life problems, along with him owing money, or for some other unknown reason, the escapist attitude was just another indication of Boyle's troubles. His family were likely more aware of his financial struggles on this trip, as they would work odd jobs at the time to survive and support themselves. Years later, now back in Pennsylvania, Boyle was still suffering with mental illness and owing money, his situation was still the same. Why did Boyle decide on perpetrating bank robberies, you may ask? Well, the answer that he gave comes from him having seen a news story about another bank robber, the Bucks County Bandit. Boyle thought that the robber made it look easy, and he was kind of right. He decided to pursue the same risky trade. Boyle only received three and a half years for the eight bank robberies in 2007 and 2008. Likely given this short amount of time, 
because of the less violent approach taken. The motive that he gave for the crimes was for financial gain. He had to make car payments, pay tuition and buy photography equipment. He cried at his sentencing and exclaimed that, I wish I could have made better choices. Bank victims expressed their traumatic experiences at the sentencing and pleaded for Boyle to receive the maximum sentence of 160 years. This didn't happen and Boyle served three and a half years in state prison plus probation. His family was seen crying at the sentencing with his son making the comment that he would have found a job instead of attend school if he had known a financial problem that his dad was having. Boyle served his time in state prison and would be released in August 2011. Leaving prison and readjusting back into society is likely very difficult. Would Boyle manage to become a productive citizen and put his bank robbery spree behind him? You can probably guess the answer. Boyle decided to plan on committing more bank robberies. However, this time his approach switched. He'd be much more aggressive and meticulous in his approach this time. He planned out escape routes and he'd come up with new ways to hide and spend the bank takings. The robberies restarted on June 8, 2012 at the Colonial American Bank in Horsham, Pennsylvania. Following this, they continued for another four years in both Montgomery and Bucks County. They had become much more extreme over time, as mentioned, likely because Boyle had already experienced the ramifications of being previously apprehended. Sticking with some of the previous choices, like multiple clothing layers, Boyle added various hats and masks. He now brandished a handgun and threatened bank tellers. This time his face was much more hidden. He had learned from his mistakes. As mentioned earlier, bleach was used to cover up any DNA evidence left at some of the robberies, and gloves were worn by Boyle to prevent DNA evidence from being recovered. The tellers were terrified of the straw hat bandit as he was now known. He forced bank employees to open bank vaults along with ATMs. This is pretty unusual for bank robbers who want to be in and out of the bank in quick succession. Hanging around for lengthy periods of time obviously makes the robbery more dangerous for everyone involved and more chance of your apprehension. In the previous robberies, much of the money had gone toward paying bills, but this time his intention had switched. Lifestyle focus mainly. He used Square, a payment transfer company, to launder some of the money. He paid money into his business account for his aerial photography business called Sky Eye View. Instead of wire transferring the money for free, he paid $470 in fees so that he could launder $17,000. He spent $4,300 on a Rolex watch and headed down to Florida for a month-long vacation. Crime was certainly planning out well for the Straw Hat Bandit. The final attributed robbery to the Straw Hat Bandit came on July 2nd, 2016 at the PNC Bank in North Wales a borough in Montgomery County, Pennsylvania. It was 10 past 10 in the morning on Saturday when the Straw Hat Bandit emerged for his final robbery. Ordering customers to the ground, he demanded cash and once having obtained the money, he would then flee. The Straw Hat Bandit was a clear menace to Pennsylvanian banks and the authorities were desperate to nab him. Despite the numerous methods employed to avoid any physical evidence, circumstantial evidence would prove to be the downfall of the Straw Hat Bandit. A false emergency services call from a burner phone was tracked to a local library. CCTV surveillance, along with library witnesses, placed Richard Boyle at the scene during the time that the call was made. The FBI arrested him on April 20th, 2017, he was already in state custody 
following a probation violation in October 2016. He had been linked to the 11 bank raids and the case was now federal. Further incriminating circumstantial evidence came from Boyle's stationary phone that was left at his home, along with his previous eight bank robbery convictions. He tried to divert the attention away from his finances, but his lying statements didn't match financial records. For example, he said that he made his money through lucky gambling wins, but a search of records showed that he'd lost more than he had ever won. It wasn't looking good for him. The authorities wanted to make an example out of Richard Boyle. The total stolen was $495,686 for these new robberies, 11 in total. That brought the total amount of robberies committed by Richard Boyle to 19. He had targeted banks in suburban areas and the false phone call threats had left many people worried given their mass hysteria surrounding shooting epidemics at the time. The insane part of the Straw Hat Bandit story is the outcome, with the initial motivation being to pay bills and pay off debt. The debt had the snowball effect and Boyle couldn't even seem to escape it. Boyle still had $100,000 to pay from the first set of bank robberies. In 2020, Boyle would be hit with a 71 year sentence. He was ordered to pay just under half a million in restitution. He richly deserves the sentence, the US attorney said. Boyle will now die in prison and will never be able to pay back the full amount of restitution. It is crazy to think that the original aim to get out of a bad situation only resulted an even worse fate for Richard Boyle. Situations can change for the best at a moment's notice and hopefully anyone going through a tough time can think rationally and not make the series of bad choices that the Straw Hat Bandit did. Thanks for watching the video. Be sure to comment your thoughts on the Straw Hat Bandit in the comments section below. As always, thanks for watching.